Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi. Welcome to your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Today is September 12th, 2018. Beautiful here in LA, as I say all the time. You know, we're so blessed to be in this really phenomenal state and great city. So I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And I want to remind you, as I said so often, Every day is a good day, no matter if you wake up with bed head and bad breath and all the other things that people wake up with, just know you woke up. That's a good thing. That's a good start. So be appreciative of that and know that you're here for a great purpose. So why not go out and live in your passion? Live the best possible version of yourself. And guess what? That is enough. That's enough. Nothing extra, no outside validation. Just love and appreciate you just the way you are. You know, we have a great show for you today. It's going to be a shorter show, but a lot of stuff to cover. You know, and before we get started, you know, I want to tell you that the subject will be gaming questions. I'll be taking questions from gamers and from people really all over the world who've gone to the YouTube channel. Please go and subscribe to the YouTube channel also because there you see that we have over 100 Plus, I think it's over 200 maybe, a catalog of videos there to help you if you have issues concerning your health, fitness, working out, gamer's health, how to protect your hands, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulder, posture, ergonomic evaluation of your, of your gaming center, of your workplace. All of that is right on the website, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now, we've had over, what, I think 57,000 subscribers and over 6.5 million views, I believe. So, you know, I really appreciate you, and I thank you for being a part of my community and know that my community is your community. So bear with me today. My allergies are going crazy. You know, I was playing with a neighbor's cat this morning. I'm su just supremely allergic to cats, and so you get the, the byproduct of it like I do. So sorry for the runny nose and the, the, and the, the red eyes, but that's what's going on. So with that said, I want to say, you know, yesterday was the uh, 17th anniversary of 9-11. Now, 9-11, I, I have to share this with you. It, we've had a lot of horrific, horrific tragedies with respect to shootings in schools, in theaters, in parks, in people's homes, just just horrible stuff, terrorist attacks. But I'll, I'll share this with you on a personal note. Of all those many, many tragedies, the two that always resonate with me the most profound, and I don't, I don't even know why because they were all horrific, are 9-11 and the Sandy Hook shooting in Connecticut. I think about those two things every day. There's not one day since they've occurred that I haven't. And 9-11, you know, that happened September 11th, of course, uh, 2001. I'll never forget, it was a Tuesday, and I was just getting out of bed and walking to get into the shower, and I did something I, I never do, which is to turn on the television. So I turned on the television, and as I was walking literally to go to the shower, I heard, and the tower was hit. And I thought, what tower is that? So I backed up and I went back and I looked at the monitor and I saw that uh, a plane had gone into one of the towers. It was, it was ridiculous. I, I, I'll never forget thinking to myself, this is crazy. I hope these people survive. I, I remember thinking all these things like, like how can they get out of the building? You know, and I, I remember thinking, you know, at least the building will stand, but hopefully the people above it will be able to get out. You know, I was thinking, how are they going to get down if that floor is on? All these things were going through my mind. Like I said, that was a, a Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was a Tuesday because I, I had to be on call the next day, I remember, which was a Wednesday. So, um, you know, that that was just a tremendous loss of life. It was devastating for the country. It's still devastating for me even now, 17 years later. It's still one of those things I think about. And then Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook happened on December 12th, 2014. And that day... That day was, was a Friday. It was a Friday, I remember, because it was 11 days before Christmas. And I remember thinking, how, how are those parents going to get through having the Christmas trees with all the presents and gifts for their kids that now will never be opened, the joys will never be shared, 
the laughter, the, 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 the pictures, the videos will never be shared because those moments have been taken away by them. Um, so I, I, I think it's so extraordinary that how tragedies, even though we may not be a part of that family, affect it. We're a part of the human family, so we all are affected. Um, yeah. So, so those, those, are, those, are, those are both uh, tragic events. Um, the other thing I'll tell you about, about Sandy Hook, which I remember so well, was that uh, I was walking to the hospital where, where, I, where I was at the time, and I'll never forget overhearing someone say, isn't that tragic, all of those children murdered? And I thought, what is that about? So I went to the lobby of the, of, the, of, the, of the hospital, and then I saw the monitors, and it was just, uh, it was just, uh, that was devastating. That was devastating. I, I, you know, I, it was just devastating. You know, and don't forget now, we've had many, many other horrible things. No one is more horrific than the other. They're all horrific. <laughs> They're all bad. You know, from what happened in Florida at Pulse nightclub to Columbine, you know, we could go on. What happened here, right here in Riverside County in, in California, you know, I could, I could it, it's literally every week we can go on and on and talk about these. Um, so I would recommend, and I, I can share with you what I do, is when I think about it, I always send out a, a silent prayer to the, the people that were immediately affected, to the community. And, and I always give thanks to the first responders. I always do that. And uh, I think that's what sort of like gets me through this. But it's, uh, I, I don't know, tragedy is uh, one of those things that I, I think if people would just think before they do these horrific things, that maybe they wouldn't do them. I hope they wouldn't, you know, um, because it, it puts the whole country and the whole nation and the whole world in a state of, you know, post-traumatic stress. It really does. You know, as I, as I said, this was 17 years ago, and I can get as emotional today, right now, about 9-11 and about Sandy Hook as I felt when I just found out about those things. So, again, I think prayer, forgiveness, but action also, being aware, being uh, vigilant, being focused, I, I think we have to take all of these things into account, all right? So to the, the families and first responders, uh, the community, you know, for, for the United States, for the world that continues to mourn, you know, almost 3,000 people being killed in 9-11. You know, and it, it also the death count for that is still not sure, you know. They think it was close to 3,000. It could have been more. Because, you know, some of the, the bodies could not be even recovered because they were literally just incinerated, you know. We're talking uh, obliteration of DNA, gone, you know. So um, just, uh, just just really, really tragic, yeah. So so that's, I just wanted to, to say that and share that with you, you know. It's one of those profound things that, that, that stays with me at, at 35 plus, 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 <laughs> it'll be with me when I'm 35, plus 35, plus, 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 you know. So I just want, I want to say that to you. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, of course, is, you know, Hurricane Florence barreling down on the Carolinas and Georgia. I hope everyone gets out. It looks like a massive, massive Category 4 storm. And then if the hurricane hits, it's, it will hit at a 4, they think, possibly a 5. At the lowest, a 3. You know, we're talking winds over 120 miles per hour sustained. So really, you know, value your life, value your family's life. Get out, get out, get out. Call your friends, call the people that you love. They're thinking about staying around and just riding it out. This is not one of the ride outs. This is, this is what we're talking about the fury of a Katrina, you know, the fury of a Hugo, you know, the fury of Maria, you know, it's just incredible. And I'll, I'll share something else with you. I was thinking about this this morning. You know, the, the, the many people in Puerto Rico who are still without so much. I'm really hoping that our country will continue to do what we can to help the people in Puerto Rico. That island is still very much devastated. The infrastructure is still broken. 
I, I think we cannot forget that they are our brothers and sisters, the people in Puerto Rico. They're human beings. These are families. These are mothers and fathers and daughters and brothers and grandmothers and grandparents, aunts and uncles, you know. These are people who had businesses. They are, they are people like you and I, and they deserve to be treated with more humanity. They deserve to get more care. They deserve more from FEMA. They deserve that. And uh, I think we really have to send a message to Congress that change has to come. It has to come really quick. And the divisiveness that still reigns supreme in our country with respect to race inequality, uh, gender inequality, gender bias, misogynism, uh, racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, I mean, all, all these just horrific phobias and fears and, and, and craziness. We got, we got to put it into it. You know, we have to really look at the, what I call the bombastic, um, ridiculousness of politics today and know that we have to silence that by putting in people that will do something different. That we have to vote. That that's all I can say. So with the midterms coming up, I'm recommending, not not only recommending, I'm actually asking everyone to go out and vote. I'm asking everyone to let your voice be heard. Now, one thing, I'll say this: that is, if you don't vote, don't complain. You know, don't just just if you if you want to be that passive. Well, when things are not going your way, continue to be passive. <laughs> Don't wake up and say, oh, this is bad, or why is this happening, or why should this happen, why is this program cut out, or why these people aren't getting aid. Uh, you know what? Don't complain. You didn't vote. <laughs> So you don't, you're kind of like one of those people I say, a non-voter is someone who really doesn't matter because they're saying that their voice doesn't matter. They don't want to be heard because they have nothing to say. And I believe we all have something to say. I believe we all have a voice that should be heard. And I believe if you can vote, you should vote. And I've said before, my grandmother, who was, who was in her 80s, was always clear about, about, hey, I don't feel good, but get me up. I have to go and vote. You know, she was clear about that. And I want to remind you, you know, even my grandmother's passed away and I, I, I miss her. That that sense of civil engagement that she had, I've always remembered. And I think we should all be the same. You have to be engaged with the civil practice. And what does that mean to be a citizen? Well, you have to vote. You have to be involved in your community. You have to be involved by voting, period. All right, so I guess that's my soapbox today that I've, I've stood on about about 9-11, about Sandy Hook, and about voting, and about being active in community. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some questions today about gamers. And, oh, and I also want to thank everyone, too. I got, I got really, really, really wonderful comments about, uh, you know, being on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. It was a great, great show. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it, was, it was great. That's all I can tell you. I, I really felt uh, it was privileged to take care of of, of uh, Miss Kardashian West and her family. So I just want to say I want to thank them and I want to uh, thank everyone for your really, really nice comments via email, uh, some of my many close friends on text and, and via uh, Facebook also. So thank you, thank you. And all I can tell you is more great things coming. So I'm really, uh, you, know, you know, all I can tell you is I really have a, a really, really blessed kind of life. My life is really fantastic. And I think because I'm really always aware of, of doing my best to live a life of service, what I find happening now as, as I progress in my life is that the more that I'm thankful for, the more that I'm given. The more that I'm grateful for, the more that I'm given. The more that I'm grateful for, the more that I'm given to be of service to other people. Because one thing I'm really clear about I'm really clear that I was born to be of service. So whatever you're clear about in your life, be aware of that, profess it, and be it. My life is, is just pretty spectacular. That's All I can say is thank you and thank God. I'm, I'm really uh, a grateful man. And, uh, and I tell you, I have to say this. That's not without some times that are, that are tough or challenging. But 
I push through those waves of challenge. I push through those waves of uncertainty. I push through those waves of jealousy from other people or anger. You know, because one thing that I found what my dad said uh, many, many years ago, and that is, you know, he said, you know, when you get older, Bo, my dad called me Bo. So when you get older, you're going to see that your circle of friends will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And he said, that's a good thing because the ones that are in that circle, they're the real people. And when he would say that to me, I would think, oh, here he goes again, talking, talking, talking. But guess what? Now that he's passed away, I'm grateful for that, that wisdom that he shared with me because I think it's so true that as we progress in life, the people that really, really matter, they show up for us. They want the best for us. They want, they want us to be just phenomenal. They want us to have the world stage. They want us to be, to be the best we can be. And those that don't want that, well, they're not in that inner circle. So and if they're not in that inner circle, that's okay. Don't go running for them because that's running for energy that's not really good for you. So think about yourself as being this, this really bright light bulb. You put it out, this, these, these BTUs, these BTUs, you put, it, you, you put it out this energy. And as you put out this energy, you know, you want to get back energy that is like yours. You want to see yourself as being this light bulb in front of a mirror. Well, you want to reflect that back. You want people that are doing that to you, reflecting the light back to you. So people that are not on the light, you'll see, mark my words, they will fall away lovingly, but slowly, but they will fall away because the darkness can't stay where there's light. So if there are people around you that are jealous, that are angry, that are not honest, that are not authentic, trust me, they may be around you for a while, but as your eyes open, as your appearance an understanding of discernment continues to broaden and you see who they really are, what they really want from you, how they want to use you or possibly abuse you, then it's up to you to, to make that choice of saying, huh, I know you. <laughs> I've seen you before. You're not correct. You're a BSer. You're not real. You're not honest. You're a talker, but you're not a doer. You're not true. You're not of the light. Well, once you recognize that, then it's incumbent upon you to lovingly release the negativity, love them from a distance, but love yourself even more to let them go so that you can be the best you. It takes a lot of energy, I know. You go through the grieving process like I have to with friends, relationships, personal, business, and otherwise. I've gone through the grief of, God, I thought that was going to be the best. I thought that was going to work. Then when it doesn't, you lovingly let it go, be forgiving, be respectful, be kind, but always be true to you. And know that no one has your best interest for you in general, but you. Now, people are going to be around when you're paying them, when, when you're giving them money, when you're gifting them, when you're doing good things for them. Oh, they're going to show up in droves. <laughs> and they're going to bring friends, family, and company. <laughs> they're going to show up. Now it's up to you to say, huh, when they, when they say hello to you, can I come on board too? You got to say, no, I'm driving this boat and I, I, think, uh, I think it's okay. I think I can make it through. So as you go through the waters of life, and yes, they sometimes they may be choppy, they may be tough, there may be swallows that come in, there may be these tidal waves that come in, and even sometimes this, this major storm surge. When it comes in, just know, that you have the strength, the power, and the intelligence to ride that wave. You have to make it through. And how do you do that? You take it one day at a time. Not being in a place of overwhelm. And then when you release the past, you release it. Don't revisit it. Don't, no. You have to, when you let things go, you let them go lovingly, respectfully, and then you keep going forward. Never stop. You don't want this type of motion. You want this type of motion. You want to keep going up, not lateral. Lateral, you, you're in the same place. You're in the same plane. You, you haven't done much. You want to like make a baby step every day to be a better you, a baby step every day to save a little more money, to buy one thing less, to volunteer a little more, to say a kind word to someone, to kiss someone, to hug someone, to share a smile with someone. To remind someone that they're the best thing since sliced bread. Why not? If you think you're the best thing since, since sliced bread, guess what? Other people are also. 
because other people are reflections of us. Just the truth. So keep that in mind. As you go through your day, make someone else's day a good day also. Again, a smile, a hug, a kiss, something nice for someone else. Why not do that? I love making people feel good. And guess what? I've always seen that people love making me feel good. And I'm grateful for that. Because people can feel the authentic you. They know that. No matter how many masks they may wear or how many masks you may wear, when those masks are taken off and they see the real you, if that real you is about love and truth and honesty, how can they not embrace that? Who wouldn't want some of that? I like a big scoop of that. Of course. I want you to take it too. Be that. Be love. Be kindness. Be forgiveness. And of course, my favorite word, you hear it all the time, be gratitude. I love that word. I love the the meaning of it, the definition of it. I love being it. I love living it. Gratitude is just the way to go, I believe. I believe that. Now, let's talk about gaming. Let's talk. take your questions. So let's begin. So sorry for my runny nose and my runny eyes. So <laughs> this question is from M-A-Y-04-B-W-U. So and they saw the video of tendonitis of the hand. And the question is, I've had tendonitis for a year, but it got so much ex worse in the recent two months. I lost a lot of mobility in my wrist, and doctors don't know how to help me anymore. I can't even push anything with my right hand. I'll start doing these and hope it helps. If anyone has any more tips, I'll be happy if you share them with me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so May 04BWU, let's talk about it. So if your tendonitis is that severe, number one, you have to get seen by a doctor. You have to. You have to go in and specifically by an orthopedic hand upper extremity physician. A general orthopedist may be able to help you, but a hand doctor, we see these things all the time, and most likely they'll be able to give you more help. The second thing, consider going to occupational therapy. These are therapists that are trained specifically to work with individuals that have hand problems, hand, wrist, elbow issues, an OT, a certified occupational therapist. Now, for the videos, yes, I'd say consider doing the videos. I think there's, a, there's, a, there's always a chance that they may give you some help and some reprieve of the pain that you have. However, Go and get evaluated by a specialist to make sure that it's only tendonitis, that there's nothing else going on with your hands and your wrists. I think that's really critical. Now, with that said, um, the videos, you can do those, but also take time away from gaming. You, ne you need to rest your hands. And if you do go back to playing games, then every hour take a 10 or maybe a 15-minute break to stretch your fingers, your hands, your wrists, your elbows, stand up, stretch out your legs, your calves, and also make sure that your overall fitness level is maintained, that you have good core strength, that your, your workspace or that your gaming area is ergonomically balanced, and also be sure, listen at this, to simply push away from your gaming area and rest, rest, rest. So you may have to take off a week or two weeks and just really rest your hands. And that's okay. The game will be waiting for you. You know, it's not going to go away. It's there. But you want to have your hands. You want to have proper hand health. All right? So I hope that helps you. Um, and just remember, as I say all the time here on the show, is because I'm giving you these thoughts of what you should consider doing, virtually because I don't have a chance to actually see you you have to be seen by a regular doctor all right you know my advice to you is not sufficient you need to have a true clinical evaluation by an orthopedic hand upper extremity physician this goes for this question as well as any other question that I'll ever answer on the show you know that is my my caveat to you that you have to be, and that's my disclaimer also, you have to be seen by an outside physician. You must, all right? Now, I'll take the next question. Uh, this was from, uh, let me read this. Uh, this is from Raj Gupta, R-A-G-H-A-V, last name G-U-P-T-A, hand, wrist, form, video that, that was seen by, by, by Gupta. The question is, hi, doctor. 
It's really great finding your wrist video, which is very much helpful. Can you please share a video for sacroiliac joint dysfunction? I couldn't find one. Thank you. Okay, so uh, SI joint dysfunction, I, I don't have any videos on that. Uh, but I will I will work on doing something like that. I uh, you know I really limit everything to a lot of upper extremity areas because that that's my expertise. That's my fellowship training. You know I was in school for 21 years, so you know I started when I was eight. <laughs> I like that's like a joke I play on myself. Um, so uh, so yes, I'll, I'll I'll think I'll put that down as uh, one on S. I got to tell you guys, you know, next month is going to be a really big month, so I have a whole slot of videos uh, coming up. So get ready for that. It, you guys are going to be like, wow, Dr. Levi put it on. It is going to be spectacular. All right, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll I will definitely talk to my team about doing one on sacroiliac dysfunction. That's usually I get questions about shoulder dysfunction or adhesive capsulitis or shoulder pain so this is really this is kind of unusual and different to get one about sacroiliac dysfunction so no problem i will work on that for you all right now the next question is from uh i you know i think this is from helen zu l x x u e and the question is I'm always suffering from swelling of my joints. Doesn't matter if it's my wrist, fingers, or knees. I recently began to lift heavier weights, and I'm wondering if I went way heavy too fast. Also, too many squats. It's annoying. I'm hoping these workouts will help with uh, with swelling of my wrist and fingers. Do you have anything for the knees? Sure. So, if you're having swelling around your knees, uh, two things. One is I recommend that you really make sure that you're doing the squats properly. You know, always start with air squats as a warm-up and progress from there. And also with squats, you don't have to use a lot of heavy weight for squats. Really, your body weight can often be just enough. Unless you're, you know, training or competing for something or if you're in a uh, CrossFit-type class or an Olympic lifting-type class. Think about it. You don't need to have a lot of heavy, heavy weight. It's not necessary. Um, so... But if you're having knee pain and knee swelling, number one, it's, it's important that you check your form, that make sure that your form is correct. Number two is consider not using very heavy weight. Number three, talk to a trainer that's there in your gym who can maybe help you to maybe perfect your form so that it's proper, that you're not overloading your knees, that you're not pushing your knees way above your ankles when you're doing the squat and that you're really dropping your butt back and that you're staying in a true squat position, you know. So those are things that I recommend form, form, and form. And then not using a lot of heavy weight. That, that's, that heavy weight is really overrated, you know. It's just uh, overrated. You know, you want to maintain your joint health and maintain your overall core strength, which is great. But, you know, as far as using a lot of heavy weight, unless you're, you know, doing something specific for a competition, I, there's no need to do that. All right, now, next question is, this is from Asta, A-S-T-H-A, uh, again, same name, A-S-T-H-A, cubital tunnel syndrome video that you saw, and the question is, my pinky finger, and let me just say something here, we don't use that, 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 that in medicine, pinky finger, we say, we say small finger, um, but the question is, my pinky finger hurts mostly, I feel like someone's pricking a thick needle in the tip of the finger and it it's a lot of pain at least once a day all right so let's talk about that so this is asta asta a-s-t-h-a a-s-t-h-a so let's talk about cubital tunnel some of the basics about that um so cubital tunnel is impingement of the ulnar nerve right here at guillain's canal I hope my elbows aren't too ashy um right here so if someone has pain in the elbow that radiates from the elbow to the small finger and half of the ring finger, this is called the ulnar side of the ring finger, and decreased grip strength, or really sometimes they'll have difficulty controlling the small finger to feel like uh, it, it'll bother them, uh, then it, it may be a form of of cubital tunnel syndrome. So let's talk about that. So it often presents with numbness and tingling in the small finger, half of the ring finger, pain, 
decreased grip strength, um, some swelling at the elbow, sometimes swelling at the wrist of the hand. Um, but you can also have impingement of the ulnar nerve at the wrist here at uh, Guillain's Canal, which can also cause some of the same issues of numbness and tingling in the small finger, ring finger, when the elbow is really not the issue. So number one, you're going to hear this constantly, be sure to be seen by your local healthcare practitioner. Number two, you can, you can consider getting, it's a night guard splint that will keep your elbow straight at night when you sleep. Because if you go to sleep with your elbows bent, this can cause more tension on the nerve that can cause more problems with cubital tunnel syndrome, meaning more numbness and tingling in your small finger, your ring finger. So the cubital tunnel brace will look like, uh, it will look pretty medieval actually, uh, but you just put it around your elbow and it keeps your arm straight at night. So that, that may help you. The other thing I would say, too, is, um, you know, when, you, when you're when seen by your doctor, he or she may want to do an EMG nerve conduction study test for you or maybe uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy. So be sure to be seen by them. And if you're a gamer, and hopefully you are, then be sure to take a five-minute break every hour that you're gaming to really just rest your hands, rest your fingers, do the, do the stretches that I've, I've talked about and taught before. I think that'll be very productive and very helpful for you. All right. Next question here, guys, is from... Uh, this is V... Uh, here, here is v, it's... V-I-P-I-N-X, hand and wrist exercise for gamers video. And the question was, again, the name is from V-I-P-I-N-X. Is it normal for my fingers, wrists to pop doing many of these exercises? I think I come from a history of arthritis, uh, if that is of any significance. Okay, so let's talk about that. You know, we, we've, we've kind of gone over this before, but I, I love talking about this because it's such a very common question. That is, if you hear this, popping of your joints is something wrong or something bad. So this is the way that I, I teach this and the way I talk about it. And this is the following. If you have popping of your joints without pain, I often don't think that's a big deal because it's just simply bubbles of gas that are, that's in your joints and that are, that, are, that are exploding basically when you put compressive pressure there. Now, however, I also tell people that if you have having pain in your joints, when you popping them or clicking them, or when you don't do that, just have pain in your joints, well, that needs to be investigated. And arthritis, you know, there, there are different forms of arthritis, you know, from psoriatic arthritis to rheumatoid arthritis to osteoarthritis to, to writer's arthritis. I mean, there, there's, there's so many different types of arthritis. Um, so I, I would also say if you say you have a history of arthritis, you didn't say which type of arthritis. So I, I also would recommend the following, and that is if you're having arthritic issues at an early age, be sure to be seen by your healthcare practitioner. He or she may want to send you to be evaluated by a rheumatologist to make sure you don't have an autoimmune, an autoimmune issue going on, like, like some form of rheumatoid arthritis. So that's really, really important. All right. Um, now hold on one second. The next question is, this was, uh, so, so again, I want to I want to get back to uh, that question about about the popping. So it's really usually not an issue, but still g get an evaluation by a healthcare person just to make sure. All right, at least an X-ray. Okay, the next is from Aslam A S L A M. Uh, the question is, I can't do the reverse. I don't know what's up with that. So. When, when I got this, I, 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 I brought this question up because I, it's not clear to me what are you talking about when you say do the reverse. Are you talking about the reverse, for example, this exercise and this exercise? It, it's not clear. So ask them, can you send me your question again with more detail so I can ask it, all right? It just wasn't clear what you meant by do the reverse. Um, then the question was from, it was actually a comment from Ethan Hubbard. 
uh, who saw the hand and wrist exercise for gamers. So thank you so much for these exercises. My arms feel so much better after just one set of reps. Wow. That's great to hear, Ethan. That's fantastic. The key with the exercises for the gamers, you know, because our community is a very specific community, and we're very uh, specific about the muscles that we engage as athletes. So it's so important that you really think about doing these exercises on a daily basis. And like regular exercise, the goal is always consistency and diversity of the exercises. Don't do the exact same exercises. You want to change them up every week, every two weeks, you know, do something different. But there's so many on there, there's, there's enough that you can constantly rotate exercises. So again, it's like overall fitness. It's about commitment, consistency, diet, exercise, rest, recovery, mindfulness. Mindfulness, of course, is prayer and or meditation, whatever you use in your life. All right, so I'm glad to hear that, Ethan Hubbard. Keep on gaming. Keep on doing the stretches. And remember, every hour, take five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to do the stretches that we talked about. That'll help you tremendously. All right. Um, next question is from, I, I, I love this name. It's from Starboy. Wow. I, I think that's great. So it makes you think about the, uh, what's the guy who sings that? Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me in a second. Uh, and so this is Starboy who saw hand and it was the weekend that's his name who has a song starboy all right so this it, starboy saw hand and wrist exercise for gamers so the question he had was my left hand is weaker than the right and i can't even lift a five kilogram dumbbell doing biceps workout so what's the solution for that doc all right so let's talk about that starboy if you're having that type of profound weakness on the right side you definitely have to be seen by your doctor to see what's going on. This is nothing to play around with. There are a lot of things that this could be. It could be a neurologic issue. It could be neuromuscular. But you need to be seen. If you're saying you can't even lift basically, you know, five kilograms on, on one side, then that needs to be addressed. It really does. Um, so... Um, I, I want you to do that, and I want you to get back to me and let me know what was found. You know, this could be something uh, that's nerve issue. It could be central nervous system. It could be something in your brain. It could be uh, some type of it could, so many things. I could go on and on about that. But we need to know why you have such profound weakness on one side of your body and not on the other side. So, you know, they have to make sure that you don't have some form of uh, of, a, of a dystrophy uh, a muscular issue, so many things, it can, just so many I can go on, but we need to know about that, all right? So don't take this for, don't take this lightly. Be sure to get evaluated, all right? The next question is from T-R-U-E hyphen, uh, who saw the carpal tunnel uh, video as well as the tendonitis video, and the question is, can you please do a video on exercises for the little finger? Mine feels weird from using my laptop. I do not use the little finger. It just hovers over the laptop while I work using other fingers for typing. So I can show you something right now for that. So for your little finger, we can do this exercise. Take a look. I'll do it here. In and out. Up and down. Around the world. Back around the world. Open and close all your fingers. So... Let's do it again from the side, out, up and down, around the world, back around the world. Try those for a set of 20, three times a day for the next week or two. That should definitely help to give you some greater strength there. Now, often if you're having issues with the small finger, it can also be attributed to an ulnar nerve issue we talked about before for the cubital tunnel or for entrapment of the ulnar nerve at Guillain's Canal here. If you have weakness of the small finger, if you feel like you're not controlling it very, very well. So, again, I really can't underscore uh, this issue of you have to be seen by your doctor. You have to get evaluations uh, by your physician to, to be sure that there are no underlining issues with your health. All right? So don't, don't take it lightly. I really mean that. Now, our last question is from... Uma Thurakar, beautiful name, U-M-A, last name, N-E-R-U-R-K-A-R, who saw the thumb pain video. Thank you, doctor. Exercising my thumb is not bending. It remains straight and painful. 
am able to rotate the thumb. That's all sets of exercise I'm not able to do. Uh, the pain is there for around two weeks now. Okay, Uma. So again, go and be seen by your doctor so that she or he can really evaluate your hands. Then you can show them the video that you looked at and see what they think of that. And then I would say do those exercises to see if that helps you. The, the thumb... The thumb is really critical because the thumb is 42% of all functional motion of the hand. So when your thumb is down, think about it. This one digit is almost 50% of all hand use. So if your thumb is not working, then you really just have basically a paw. You can't really do a lot when you don't have the thumb engaged. So you really have to go in and get that evaluated. That's really important. The thumb, um, you know, we all, I always call the thumb the, the chief of the hand. It's really the 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 major leader of the hand you know it's like truly the commander in chief of the hand and when the thumb is down then it's 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 devastating for your hand and if you're not using your thumb the whole arm will often get very very weak because you want to engage you don't engage the hand as much you will use the other hand more all right so it's important that you get that checked out all right uma um i want to thank everybody for listening today this was a, a little shorter show you know uh however we got through all the questions, which is great. I want to thank you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, social media, Instagram, Instagram, <laughs> Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Please subscribe. Be a part of my community of health, fitness, well-being, and gratitude. And know that you matter. Be kind to the veterans out there. You know, I, I love those great women and men because they've done so much to sacrifice for our country. Just be kind to them. Give them whatever you can. Uh, sometimes just a, a, a handshake, a thank you for your service. Just, but be nice to them. They, they deserve that. And again, you know, let's, let's send our prayers and thoughts up for, for the Carolinas and for the East Coast that are going to get hit, looks like, with Florence. Let's just pray that the storm dissipates into its native nothingness and that no one is hurt. Let's just continue to pray that, that, that people will be safe and that people will get out and that the storm won't do the damage that that's being predicted. I'm just, I'm going to just believe that it'll be okay. Um, and I just want to thank you for being a part of my community. And I thank the gamers and I thank the esports athletes. And I just want to say, you know, life is good. My life gets better and better. And I know yours will continue to do the same. All right. This is Dr. Levi. Have a great, great week, everyone. I'll see you back in two weeks as uh, I think the guy was, I can't, I can't which show this was. He used to say, I'll see you back in two and two. Who was that? That was a... Uh, it was some radio host, right? Who was that? I, I, Tony and I were trying to think who that was. I think... Oh, you know what it was from? The guy's name was Tom Woodley, I think. Or w Woodley. It was from the dating show, the dating connection or something. But I know he said, I'll be back in two and two. Something like that. <laughs> I could be way off. It was like so far back in my head. So listen, have a great week. I apologize for my, my runny nose today, but I'll be better next time. God bless you guys. This is Dr. Levi. See you back in two weeks. Bye.